بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I want you to imagine you've been transported over a thousand years into the past to the year 58 after the Hijrah An elderly lady is lying on her deathbed Somebody knocks on her door and her nephew enters and tells her that her visitor is Abdullah ibn Abbas she indicates that she doesn't really want to meet him because, you know, she knows he's going to come in and praise her. And in the end, she allows him in and he stands behind a curtain and begins to speak. He says to her, from the first day of creation, you have been singled out to be the mother of the believers. You were the most beloved wife of the messenger of Allah. Because of you, Allah revealed verses relating to tayammum, the dry ablution. The ayat of Quran speak about the purity of your character. And these verses are now recited by the Muslims in the masajid day and night. Who is this lady, you might ask? She is, my brothers and sisters, the one whose hands applied perfume to the beard of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her lap was the lap in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his last breath. She was the one whose saliva mixed with the blessed saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he passed away when she softened the siwak for him. She was Aisha radiallahu anha, wife of the messenger, daughter of the most beloved man to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this series, we're going to be looking at the life of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. Her life will elevate us. It will remind us that women hold a special position in Islam. It will remind us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to be his worshippers, to devote our lives to him and to be women of substance. Not women enslaved to the consumer culture, obsessed with our bodies and beauty. We're going to find out about her childhood, her hijrah from Mecca to Medina, her marriage to the Prophet wasallam, her relationship with her siblings, the slander against her and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exonerated her from above the seven heavens. We're going to also find out about her role as a student of the Prophet wasallam, and then beyond the life of the Prophet, her role in the caliphate of Abu Bakr, her father, of Umar, of Uthman. Then we're going to look at the events that transpired when Uthman radiallahu anhu was assassinated. Why did our mother Aisha join a group of Sahaba to march to Iraq? Why did she regret that journey? What was the ibadah, the worship of our mother Aisha like? What kind of a teacher was she? What kind of an auntie was she? Who were her students and what were some of her opinions and how did she use to correct the other Sahaba? We will be looking at all these aspects of her rich life so that we might learn from her and perhaps we too may become beloved to Allah, women of Jannah. Did you know, dear brothers and sisters, that Aisha radiallahu anha was only 18 years old when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. So the majority of her life, she actually spent after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She lived to the age of 64. So 46 years of her life was spent after the death of the Prophet. What was the special status of the mothers of the believers, you might ask? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says about them in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number six, 
Allah says the Prophet is more worthy of the believers than themselves and his wives are their mothers. In what way were the mothers of the believers our mothers? The scholars of Islam tell us that they were our mothers in tarbiyah, in nurturing and teaching. They have a special sanctity. We respect them. We, we never speak ill of them. They had a certain nobility. No man can marry them after the Prophet ﷺ. They also had special rules for them regarding hijab, which we will find out about, inshaAllah. They are his Alul Bayt, the people of his household. Uh, they were blessed in that they would get double the reward for the deeds that they would do because they chose the Prophet Sallallahu and a simple life over the life of this dunya and its glitter and glamour. Some of the unique and special characteristics of Aisha Radiallahu Anha are, first of all, her superiority amongst women. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there were many men who achieved a state of perfection and none were perfect amongst women but Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, and Maryam, the daughter of Imran. And then he went on to say, Verily the virtue of Aisha over other women is like the virtue of Tharid, a special dish, over all other foods. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was given the glad tidings of being the Prophet's wife in Jannah. In a hadith in Sunan At-Tirmidhi, Jibreel, the angel alayhi salam, came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with Aisha's image on a green silken cloth. And he said, verily, this is your wife in this world and in the hereafter. She was also one of the few people upon whom the angel Jibreel sent salam to personally. She narrates that once Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O Aish, and that was his nickname for her, O Aish, this is Jibreel greeting you. So she said, Wa alayhi salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And she said to the Prophet, You see what I do not see. Subhanallah. She is one of only four companions who narrated more than a thousand ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So she was a key person in the preservation of the sunnah. She was the only wife of the Prophet ﷺ who was a virgin when he married her. She was the most beloved person to the heart of the Prophet ﷺ and she was the daughter of the most beloved person to the Prophet ﷺ. In fact, when he was asked, which of the people is dearest to you? He said immediately, Aisha. And then he was asked, who amongst the men is dearest to you? And he said, her father. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses in the Quran, commanding the Prophet to give his wives the choice, the choice between this life and its luxuries or marriage to the Prophet and living a simple life, the first person who the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to was Aisha. He asked her not to hasten and said she can go and consult with her parents. And she said, do I need to consult my parents concerning this? Of course I choose Allah and his Messenger and the home of the hereafter. So she was the one who was given that choice first. And then the rest of the wives followed her example and said the same as she had said. We mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ passed away in her house, in her lap. And the Prophet ﷺ and the two greatest people after the Prophets, Abu Bakr and Omar, they're buried in her house. She's the only wife upon whose lap he would sometimes be resting or in whose room he would be, and revelation would come down while he was in that state. Allah revealed verses of Quran from above the seven heavens, exonerating her. 
people used to try to bring gifts to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day when they knew he would be in her house, because they knew that it was a special day, and they wanted to draw closer to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah be pleased with all of the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and may Allah be pleased with our mother Aisha. <laughs> Welcome back. Brothers and sisters, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was born seven years before the Hijrah, which is about six years after the first revelation. In fact, Khadija radiallahu anha, when she passed away, Aisha was just three years old. The full name of our mother Aisha was Aisha bint Abi Bakr, bin Abi Quhafa, bin Amir, bin Amr, bin Ka'ab, bin Sa'ad, bin Taym, bin Murra, bin Ka'ab, bin Lu'ay, Al-Qurashiyya, At-Taymiyya. So her family tree meets the family tree of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at Murra, who was their common ancestor. And then their family tree goes all the way back to Ismail and then to Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. The name of our mother Aisha means living, prosperous. It comes from the word Aish, which means uh, to live comfortably. She also had some kunyas. Uh, her kunya was Umm al muminin of course, and also Umm Abdullah. She asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a kunya, and he said, take a kunya from your son Abdullah, meaning her nephew Abdullah ibn al-Zubayr. She also had some titles. One of her titles was Siddiqa, the truthful one. Siddiqa bint as Siddiq, right? The truthful one who was the daughter of the truthful one. She was known as Muwaffaqa, the one who's guided and inspired to success. She was also known as Habibatu Rasulillah, the beloved of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Once when Umar radiallahu anhu was giving a stipend to each of the wives of the Prophet, he increased the stipend of Aisha and he said, she was indeed Habibatu Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. She also had the title of al mubarraa the one who had been exonerated. Also at the pure. She had some nicknames. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam called her al humayra which literally means the little red one, which usually describes a woman who is very fair skinned. Aisha also had the nickname Aish, which is a shortened version of her name. Her parents were Abu Bakr Siddiq, whose real name was Abdullah ibn Abi Quhafa, and her mother was Umm Ruman, who married Abu Bakr after being widowed. She accepted Islam early on and made the Hijrah to Medina. And she passed away later during Abu Bakr's life in Medina. Our mother Aisha had three brothers and two sisters. Her full brother was Abdul Rahman, uh, Aisha's elder brother and uh, the son of Umm Ruman. The last of her siblings to become Muslim was Abdul Rahman. And Abdul Rahman went on to have a daughter called Amra bint Abdul Rahman, who became Aisha's key student. Our mother Aisha had other siblings from the other wives of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu. From Abu Bakr's wife Qutayla bint Abdul Izza, she had Abdullah and Asma as siblings. Abdullah was Abdullah bin Abi Bakr, who helped the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam during his hijrah. Her elder sister Asma was also known as Dhatun Nitaqain uh, because she had torn up her waist wrap and tied food for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the hijrah. Asma married Az Zubair bin Al Awam, the great Sahabi, and she had Abdullah as her son and also Urwa bin Az Zubair, who were both students of Aisha. She would also lend Aisha her onyx necklace. She had eight children, mashallah. 
Later on, when Abu Bakr went to Medina, he married Asma bint Umais, and he had a son, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. I want you to remember these names because they're going to come up later on in the series and they're going to be very key characters and key players in the life of Aisha radiallahu anha. Muhammad bin Abi Bakr had a son called Qasim who would again go on to be a key student of Aisha radiallahu anha and was one of the seven fuqaha of Medina, the seven jurists of Medina. Abu Bakr's final wife who he had in Medina was Habiba bint Al-Kharija and from her he had a daughter Umm Kulthum who was actually born after Abu Bakr's death. A little bit more about uh, Abu Bakr's wife Asma bint Umais. She was actually previously married to Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the great Sahabi. And then when she was widowed, she married Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Then after the death of Abu Bakr, she married Ali bin Abi Talib. So Aisha's brother Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, who was Asma and Abu Bakr's uh, son, he was actually brought up in the house of Ali radiallahu anhu. As for her sister Umm Kulthum, she was later married to Talha bin Ubaidillah. Talha was a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will meet him later on when Aisha radiallahu anha goes on a journey to Iraq. Now let's talk about Aisha radiallahu anha's childhood. Her father, of course, was a very important man, Abu Bakr Siddiq, the great companion. Her family were a family of nobility, the Quraysh from Banu Taym. And it was a wealthy family because Abu Bakr Siddiq was a merchant. Aisha radiallahu anha said about her parents, I never knew them except as practices of the deen. So she never became aware of them as anything but Muslims. She was born and grew up in a Muslim household. Her half-brother and sister were already Muslims. Some of the scholars say that there were four generations of Sahaba in Aisha radiallahu anha's family. Her grandfather was a Sahabi, Abu Quhafa, and then uh, Abu Bakr, of course, her father was a Sahabi. She was from the Sahaba. And then, of course, her nephews also were from the Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Zubair, for example. Her father, of course, had a huge impact on her. He was the best man from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best man after all of the prophets. He never drank a drop of alcohol, nor worshipped an idol, and he never had premarital relations, even before Islam. He used to free slaves. He used to spend his wealth for the sake of Islam. No doubt, all of this had an immense impact on her life. Brothers and sisters, during the course of this series, one of the things that you will notice is that our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was a woman of substance. What do I mean by being a woman of substance? Well, we live in a time when women, we are either commoditized or we are pursued as consumers. The various pressures and industries that are constantly calling us to be enslaved to them are insidious. They're all around us. The fashion industry, the music industry, the beauty industry, social media influencers, they're all seeking to influence us as Muslim women. And that's why it's so important for us to know our own principles, to know Allah's commands and prohibitions, and to have a strong relationship with Allah. It's also essential that we learn about the great women, the great role models of our past. Women like our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, who was a matriarch for all of us, and she was a woman of substance. If the Muslim ummah is to be revived, we need women who can resist the temptation to be materialistic, to be fickle and blow hot and cold. We need women of substance. In other words, women who think, who have a deep understanding and motivation for the life of the next world, who will do things for the pleasure of Allah, 
not for the fleeting pleasures of this life. When we study the life of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, it reminds us of what our mindset should be. This life is not forever, it is short, and our job is to navigate this life carefully. We will make mistakes, tragedies and harm may befall us, may Allah protect all of us, as it befell those before us. Even in her lifetime, Aisha radiallahu anha saw great happiness, but she also experienced great pain. People slandered her. She went through the passing away of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, her husband, when she was only 18, and she lived the rest of her life unmarried. She never had children of her own. She experienced emotions that we all experience as human beings, but what we can learn from her is how did she respond when she experienced those experiences? What we learn from Aisha radiallahu anha is that human beings are not perfect. Life is tumultuous. If you live long enough, life will affect you, right? You'll have ups and downs. But how do we respond to those difficult times? How do we recover from our mistakes? How do we harness our personality? Our mother Aisha had a strong personality. When we study her life, we can ask ourselves, how do you harness your personality? How do you try to uh, turn your temperament or your inclination towards what is right? And how do you keep bringing yourself back to making the life hereafter your priority? Far from uh, suppressing her personality, Aisha radiallahu harnessed her personality and used it for the sake of Allah. Join me next time when we will continue to study the life of our mother Aisha radiallahu and learn from her. جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك